Hi, it's Christopher Dean and welcome to part 11 of a tutorial series where we build a design system in Sketch. This time we're doing images. Okay, here I am in abstract. I'm going to go to new branch. I'm going to add in images. Select create branch. Go over to the top right and select Edit and Sketch. Okay, we're at the Artboards page. We're going to pull out, go over to the Symbols page. Duplicate the Design System Iconography Artboard. You can do that by Command D or holding down Option, Shift and dragging it over. That's what I'm going to do. Till it gets to 4996789. 5,000. We're going to rename this images. Go over to the heading. Change that to images. I'm going to make this one landscape. This one portrait. This one square. And I'm going to duplicate that one, select the one underneath it, move it down, and change this to avatar. Now, that's a circle image with somebody's head in it, like a portrait image. Let's just call it uh, avatar for now. You can change it to circle if you like. I'm going to move all of these out of the way and keep a landscape over there. Then I'm going to go and turn on my layout settings. And zoom in. I'm then going to select the top of the content folder, hit R for rectangle, and draw a rectangle out. We go and resize it to 688 by 392, and I've written that down down here. So what is it? 688, 392. Let's zoom in, turn on our grid. Place it where it was actually, there. And if I drag over slowly, you'll see that it fits within six columns and also is the height of the eight point grid. We're going to clear out the border, go over to Fill, select Pattern Fill. Now it's asking us for an image. Uh, right now we're just going to keep this one and we'll drag another image into it later when we find one. And just before we go into image selection, I normally don't use stock imagery. Uh, I know that's going to be hard for when you're just trying to put together mock-ups uh, and I don't have any of my own photos prepared. I'm going to do a separate tutorial uh, probably a series that looks more at design language than design systems and go over the reasons why it's great to be able to shoot your own or source your own photos over getting a stock image. And I think we all know the reasoning behind that. Well, the stock image, it can be used by many different companies. So you can use it and then somebody else can use it and then somebody else can use it. Uh, there's no uniqueness there to what you're trying to do. Your imagery should be part of your company's DNA, the same as your typography, the same as the tone of voice you speak in, the same as the motion graphics that you use and how they move, the same as your video content and the way that it looks. All of this is part of your design language and I'll get into more of that separate to this series and that should be fun. But let's move on. We're going to create a symbol out of this rectangle. I'm just going to name it here as image forward slash image capital L landscape and this is going to be the only image you need for anything that's in a landscape orientation and ratio. Let's move back, turn that into a symbol by selecting symbol at the top left, select OK, where did it go? It's over here at the top right, we're going to drag that back in over the one that we just made 
in the layers panel, we're going to collapse everything else. Zoom back and rearrange the order of this by dragging it right to the top. And then let's drag the symbol we just made on top of it. We can now delete the place symbol underneath. We're now going to move the portrait heading over. Place that where it needs to be over here. You turn on your guides, it'll help everything snap into place. Okay, we're going to duplicate this by option, shift, and drag. Let's move this over. Change this to 448 by 600. Let's rename it Portrait. Copy and paste that name for the rectangle's name. We're going to duplicate this one again, and drag it over here to the left. This is going to be the square one, so let's bring that header in. And place it around there. This one's size is going to be 328 by 328. Let's resize that heading, so it's three columns wide. Move the avatar heading over. And make it that three columns wide. Change the name of the symbol we just duplicated to square. And duplicate it and drag it over to where the avatar heading is. Just going to rename this now actually. Avatar. We're going to change the size of this to 208 by 208. We're then going to select O for oval. Go to the top left and shift and drag an oval to fill out the height and the width. We're going to move this to the bottom. We're going to change its color to color color white, rename oval to mask, then right click on it and select mask at the bottom. And just so it's easier to override the avatar when it's placed, let's rename its symbol name to image. The others will do that when you place them. We pull back out and save where we are. Go over to the artboards and place one of them. I'm going to go to image, image landscape. Okay, that pattern still doesn't look that great. So let's go and find some images from Unsplash. I'm going to go off and do that. You can find whatever ones you like. And when I come back, there'll be four that we can use. Okay, I found some images that I think are going to work. Uh, there's a bit of diversity in them, so let's go and grab them. Select the rectangle that's inside image landscape. Go over to fill, then choose image. And for the first one, I found one from raw pixel. Let's select it. And there we go. And you'll notice if we select the symbol, Click on Adjust Content on Resize, and then do this. It 
It's mimicking background cover, which is a CSS value. We're going to do the same thing with portrait. Go to fill, select one from Andrew Neal. Go over to square, choose image. This one's from Studio Republic. I'm going to zoom in and select avatar. And this one's from Jurica Colotech. Okay, we've got a few images ready. Let's turn off our grid and our guide. Save where we are. Go over to the artboards. You can see the symbol that we had placed there previously is still there with its new image applied. So let's say we wanted to change that and do it easily. We can drag and drop an image right into this choose image area over here. See the little grayed out image on the right hand side? Let's go and do that. So instead of having this one, you could replace it with this one simply by dragging it until you see the little green plus sign and drop it. And now it is the one that behaves like a background cover. If we place the other ones, let's turn on our grid and guide. and do the same thing for them. You can use any image you want in these symbols. Let's select the avatar one and swap it for this one by dragging it over here. Awesome, let's go back. I'm just gonna delete the other three and keep this one. So let's take this up to zero, zero, lock the sizes to each other and enter one, nine, two, zero. Now we've got a hero banner. We turn on our guides and add text. I'm going to write happy at work because aren't we all? Go over to the textiles and select DT, H, H1 display, white, center. Center that text. Stretch it out to the content region. Could even move it up and then unlock the size, resize it up here. And there you go. Now we can grab another image, replace this one. And this one still works, but unlike the other one that was cropping off her head, you might want to prepare your images before you drag them in. Okay, I'm going to pull back out, delete everything. Make sure these are layered properly. Landscape portrait image square avatar. Fantastic. Okay, that's it. Let's go down to preview and commit. Enter images done. Go to the bottom right and commit changes. And there we go. We can see the artboard that we created, the image symbols that we created also. And although the image symbols that we created will work for most of the scenarios that you have, feel free to resize them. If you're using a CMS like WordPress, you can write your own ratios and have WordPress prepare the images for you. You can prepare them outside of your CMS and then upload them that way. This is just built to cover most scenarios. But those are the four image ratios and symbols that I use in my daily production work. So they work for me, I hope they work for you. The next one is going to be about tabs and tables. So I hope you join me for that one and I'll see you next time. Bye.